Microsoft Azure environments can be vulnerable to privilege escalation issues just like most other computing systems. Sometimes there are user accounts and even cloud computing resources themselves that can gain additional privileges that they previously did not have. One interesting escalation issue arises when user accounts have the ability to modify attributes on other accounts, such as service principles. In this video, I'll show you how to locate these types of escalation issues and exploit them. To help us identify escalation paths in Azure, we are going to leverage Azure Hound. Azure Hound is a Bloodhound data collector for Azure. Bloodhound is a tool that we've been using on penetration tests for years now to help us identify and analyze attack paths in Active Directory environments. Well, with Azure Hound, we can now collect data from Azure tenants, including both Azure Active Directory and Azure Resource Manager. So let's dive in and see what kind of attack paths we can find in one of my own Azure tenants. Now, to set this up, I deployed some resources to my own Azure account. And to do that, I leveraged the same technique that I described in a video I released a few weeks ago called How to Build a Cloud Hacking Lab. In that video, I showed how you can leverage uh, two different tools, uh, one called Azure Goat and another one called Purple Cloud to deploy resources to your own account. For this video, I deployed some of those same resources. That way, when we go to leverage Azure Hound to look for paths of escalation, uh, we can potentially identify those attack paths there. To start, I installed Bloodhound in my Linux VM. And to do that, I followed the read the doc site uh, that I've got linked in the description below. Basically, you have to install Java, you have to install Neo4j. And then once you install Neo4j, uh, you connect to it on your local host and change a password. And then you'll be able to download the Bloodhound GUI next and then connect that to the Neo4j backend on your, on your system. So basically, follow these instructions, installed Bloodhound, uh, and got up and running with the Bloodhound GUI. After downloading and installing Bloodhound, the next thing we need to do is download the Azure Hound tool itself. Now, you, with both Azure Hound and Bloodhound, you have the option of going with pre-compiled binaries or uh, you can compile it yourself. And those instructions are in the, the Azure Hound repo, which I will link below. But either way, you will need the Azure Hound binary so that you can uh, launch it against the Azure tenant. Now. To authenticate, there are a couple options we have to authenticate to our account after we have downloaded the Azure Hound binary. One, you can pass credentials directly to it via the command line. However, if there's MFA on an account, you may need to go through what is known as a device code login process. And to do that, you can initiate it with a, a little bit of PowerShell. Within the Azure Hound repo, they include some examples on doing the device code login. I'll also include a link to my Cloud Pentest cheat sheets where I'm gonna have these as well. But the gist of it is that it initiates a, a process where you have a code now that you can take to a browser and you can perform a device code login. So if you go to microsoft.com slash device login, at that page, you can enter the code that, or, or the code from where you initiated that device code login process. So what this allows you to do though, it allows you to authenticate to an account in one place in the browser, uh, you can go through the entire MFA process, and then acknowledge that you are authenticating another tool um, in another location, such as a command line tool. And in this case, we're gonna use Janet Johnson here. Um, this was one of the users that was the initial uh, starting point for the uh, Purple Cloud deployment that I utilized to launch a scenario within my account. So, all right, we have authenticated as Janet Johnson. So now back in the PowerShell window, there's a second piece we have to run, a second PowerShell uh, script we need to run to actually retrieve our tokens. So we'll copy this in and we should get a result back that looks something similar to this where we have an access token, a refresh token, and an ID token. Now, leveraging that refresh token that we see here, uh, we're able to take that and use it with Azure Hound. So it might need a little bit a little bit of cleanup because it does have some extra uh, returns on the end. So um, we can throw that in, you know, a text editor of choice, and then go and remove any of those extra lines from it. And then now we have a clean token. We can copy that. Um, and what we're going to do is take it over to the Linux uh, VM where I've got Azure Hound, right? So I'll run dot slash Azure Hound. Um, and then we are going to specify dash R for the refresh token. So we can paste in that refresh token right there. And then we need to run the list command, which will enumerate information from our tenant. Um, then we need to give it the tenant name. And this could be either the tenant ID or the domain associated with that tenant. In my case, uh, I'm going to run it against, against glitchcloud.com. 
And then finally, um, I'm going to specify a higher verbosity of level two, and then we're going to output dash o to output dot json. And we'll run that, and it should uh, because we have authenticated uh, via the device code login. That refresh token is then utilized by Azure Hound to go and enumerate a ton of information from our account. So this is everything from the Azure Active Directory side and Azure uh, Resource Manager side as well. And it throws it in a JSON file for us that we can then take and upload to the Bloodhound GUI. All right, so to analyze attack paths, we will go ahead and log into the Bloodhound GUI. And then after logging in, we will upload the output from Azure Hound. So when we log in the first time, we shouldn't see any data currently, but if you're on the right, we can click upload data and then click our output.json file. And then that file will begin to upload and enable us to parse it in the uh, Bloodhound GUI. Now, depending on how large the environment is, this could take a while. However, uh, for our testing purposes, our, our tenant's pretty small and it's already done. So let's go ahead and close that. And now once the data has been uploaded, if you click the dropdown uh, for the database info over here, we can see uh, we've got a number of Azure objects now. So we can see that we have a number of applications. So AZ apps, we have over 1,100 of them. Um, we've got three devices. We've got a couple groups. We've got 97 roles. We've got over 500 service principles in our account and 35 user accounts. Now, the thing that's kind of interesting is each one of those service principles can have different permissions. And so that's kind of the, the angle that we're going to attempt to exploit here. So first, let's go ahead and just search uh, for our user account that we're running as. So Janet Johnson. Now, let's say we wanted to try to find paths of escalation from Janet Johnson to a more privileged group, such as global admins for that, for example. Now we can click on, on her node and see a little bit more information about that user uh, specifically. But if we wanna find a path, we can click the little road drop down here and we can actually click or type in something like global admins, right? So we can search for a global administrator and try to identify a path from Janet Johnson to global admins and we see uh, something like this, where we've got global administrator group on the right, we've got Janet Johnson on the left here, but in between it, um, we've got a number of what appear to be service principles. So if we look at some of these, we have like uh, the marketing app at Glitch Cloud. Basically what Bloodhound is telling us is that Janet Johnson has the AZ add secret permission for that service principle, which is a member or has the, the role of global administrator. So there's a, there's a global administrative service principle that we can change the password for. So theoretically, if we change the password for that service principle, that, that, that account has more privileges than we have, and therefore we have escalated privileges. So let's see if we can exploit that. Now, caveat, you know, changing passwords for any account, whether it be a standard user account, service principle, can break things. So be very, very careful if you try to do anything like this, because it, there's a high likelihood that you may break something. But keep in mind that it is possible. All right, so first up, let's go ahead and log in to the Janet Johnson account from the AZ CLI. So I'm gonna log into this account because this is the one we're we're operating as uh, that we want to escalate privileges with. Cool, so if you throw that dash dash allow no subscriptions on the end, then you, you can authenticate with an account that isn't actually attached to subscriptions, which is a nice little feature of the AZ CLI there. So once that's logged in, we should see something like this where now um, we can go ahead and set a new credential for that service principle. Now, we have to pick a service principle to modify, right? So if we go back to the Bloodhound GUI, we can go through here and select one of these, right? So for example, let's take this uh, glitchcloud.com marketing app. So the object ID here is what we can utilize with uh, the AZ CLI to create a new service principle credential. So if we, if we run AZ AD SP credential reset, and then we got to give it the, the ID for that uh, service principle that we want to change. And what will happen if we have permissions to reset a credential for a service principle, then we should see an output similar to this, where we are now presented with a new application ID, the password for that new service principle, and a tenant ID. Okay, so we now have a credential for a service principle that is in the global admins group in this Azure tenant. So how do we use that? Let's go ahead and log in uh, with the AZ CLI again, but this time uh, we're gonna run AZ login. We gotta specify that it's a service principle. Dash dash service principle. Then we need the username, uh, which is the application ID in this case. 
we need a password dash P and then we give it the password field from the second output there. And then uh, we need the tenant, which is here. And then finally, um, we can specify allow no subscriptions so that we can log into this account even if it doesn't have a subscription attached to it. And we should see something like this uh, if it's successful authenticating. Okay, so at this point, we've escalated within the Azure tenant from an application administrator up to a global admin. Now, what else could we do? Let's see how far we could take this, right? So, you know, one thing we could do, we could create new users. That might be a little noisy. We could add roles to user creden credentials we already have. So, for example, Janet Johnson, right? We could try to add additional roles. Let's like, for example, let's say, what if we made her a global admin? Now that might throw up a lot of alerts in a lot of different environments. However, to demonstrate uh, how that's possible, let's walk through it. So first up, let's get the information associated with the Janet Johnson account with the AZ AD user list command. We're gonna pass the display name for Janet Johnson here. And what we want is this, this ID field here. Cause what we're gonna do is we're going to submit a request that will actually give Janet Johnson the role of a uh, global admin. So in my Cloud Pentest cheat sheets, I've got a few commands here that we're gonna walk through. So the first one here, we're gonna create the body of a web request. And in that web request, there's a couple fields we need. So the first one is the principal ID. So that's this uh, the ID associated with that user in the Azure tenant. And then the second thing is this role definition ID. So you can see I've got a preset here with a 62E90394. So what that is, is that's the ID associated with global admin. So how do we know that that ID is associated with the global admins? So in the Azure portal, if we navigate to roles and administrators, and then we scroll down, um, you can see all the different roles in the tenant here. We will look for global administrator, right? So if we click global administrator, and then over here on the left, click description, um, we should see a template ID. And so we see that 62E90394 there. So that's that ID is associated with this global admin. Now, let's say that you wanted to add a user to a different group. You could go through here and find a specific group that you wanted to add them to, uh, like for example, SharePoint administrator, user administrator, same thing. If you click description, you've got the ID here. So that's what you would change in the the body field here so we're going to go ahead and set that so we've got the principal id we've got the global admin id set now all we have to do is submit a post request to the microsoft graph api and to do that we can use the az rest command that's part of the az cli that will leverage our authenticated session as the uh the user we authenticated to the az cli with um, to authenticate and submit this post request um, from an authenticated perspective as that service principle. So AZ REST, we're gonna give it a post method. We're gonna point it at the graph API, which is graph.microsoft.com, specifically the uh, role assignments uh, URL. And then we're gonna give it that body that we just set with Janet Johnson's ID and then hit enter. And then that should utilize our service principle credential to add Janet Johnson to the global administrators group. So now if we go back over to the Azure portal and navigate to where global administrator is, we should see that Janet Johnson is now in there. So another interesting quirk around how Azure handles permissions is in regard to how it handles subscription access for global admins. So if I log in with the Janet Johnson account, which we just made a global admin, right? And we navigate to subscriptions. We can see that that user doesn't have any subscription access currently and even says your current access does not include permissions to, to view any subscriptions. Well, one interesting thing about Azure is that you can, as a global admin, give yourself access to subscriptions. So if we navigate to Azure Active Directory and then over here on the left, navigate down to properties, then scroll down. Uh, there's this checkbox that says access management for Azure resources. Uh, it says, you know, my Janet Johnson account can manage access to all Azure subscriptions and management groups in this tenant. And by clicking yes here, what happens is Azure will add that Janet Johnson user as a user access administrator uh, for all of these subscriptions. So if I click save, and then now if we go back to subscriptions, we should see that we've got some subscriptions there. After refreshing, we do indeed have access to a subscription. Now, 
you know, in, in tenants that are large with like 30 subscription, 100 subscriptions, uh, you will see all of those subscriptions here when you click that checkbox. So just kind of a weird, interesting quirk. I kind of think it's a little bit of a privilege escalation because you are giving yourself access from just global admin who did not have read permissions to any of the subscriptions to now having access as a user access administrator to all subscriptions within that same tenant. So to wrap things up, Azure Hound is an extremely powerful tool to help us find those privilege escalation uh, opportunities as an attacker in Azure. Um, so, you know, just to demonstrate one last thing real quick, you can go into Bloodhound and search for things like VMs, you know, if you have the permissions to read um, like for example, I can read this developer VM and, you know, you can set a path to that. It's like you can, you can, you can go into Bloodhound and, and set shortest paths to here. Um, and I try to identify other paths to specific resources. It doesn't just have to be the global admin. Um, you can identify paths to any resource. And if there's a path, Bloodhound will tell you. So as we saw in this video, there are times that privilege escalation scenarios can manifest themselves due to users having the ability to manage other uh, attributes and resources in Azure. This is just one example though, and there are other potential privilege escalation opportunities out there as well. So I'd recommend that both red and blue teams are leveraging Azure Hound to identify those attack paths and address them accordingly. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to subscribe and I will catch you in the next episode.